What's up everybody and welcome to part 7 of my coding a decision tree classifier from scratch video series. In the previous two videos we've built this decision tree algorithm and now in this video we're going to use the tree that was created by that algorithm to classify new unknown flowers. And then we're also going to calculate an accuracy to see how good that tree is at classifying new flowers. So let's create another heading for that. And here we're going to say classification. And the idea here is that we're going to build a function that classifies one example and then we're going to use that function to classify all of our examples. So let's call this function simply classify example. And here we obviously put in an example. And let's quickly create one so that we, that we see what we are going to be working with. So we're going to say example equals test df dot i log uh, bracket zero so we're going to pick the first row of this test data frame as our example and let's also print it and here you can see that this flower is an iso color and has a pattern width of 1.1 pattern length of 3 and so on and then um, the second input for this function is then obviously our tree and as you may remember this tree was made up of such subtrees. So let's copy this cell and then paste it over here. So we can, uh, so we did have it in view for reference. And now how this um, function should work is that we say, okay, we have this tree, which is made up of such subtrees. And here we want to ask this question about our example. So here, for example, we would then ask is the pattern width smaller or equal to 0 0.8? And then uh, if the answer to the question is yes, we're going to pick the first element of this list. And if the answer is no, then we're going to pick the second element of this list. And then in the next step, we're going to check what type uh, this element actually is. So is it one of our classes? Then we are done with our classification and we can simply return that class as our classification for that particular example. Or is this element another question? So another subtree. In that case, we would start the process all over again. So we would again ask this question about our example, then determine uh, what element to pick from the list, and then check what that element actually is. So is it a class or still another question? And we keep doing that process until our answer is eventually um, a class. So the function that we're going to build is again a recursive function. It has a base case and a recursive part. And as we've seen here in this example, the base case is if our answer to a question is a class. So in this case, if it is a string, but it could also be a float or an integer. So in other words, the base case applies when our answer is not a dictionary. And then obviously the recursive part of the function will then run if the answer isn't a dictionary. So that's how this function should generally work. So let's now build it. And since we want to ask this question about our example, we obviously have to first access it. And since it is the key of this dictionary, we can get it by saying um, tree.keys and this returns what seems like a list. So to get the actual string, we can index this list by saying uh, brackets zero. And this then uh, returns an error because it's actually a dict, a dict keys object. And this does not support indexing. So to get the question, we then simply transform this dict keys object to a list, and then we get the string and let's store this in a variable called question. So we're going to say question equals uh, that expression. And then now we want to uh, ask this question about our example. And the way that we would um, ask this particular question is as follows. So we would say example brackets pattern width is smaller or equal to 0, 0 0.8. And this then returns a boolean 
And in this case, it returns a false because the pattern width is 1.1. So it's bigger than 0 0.8. And now um, to answer or to ask this question in this particular way, we obviously have to access the individual elements of the question from that string. And we can do that by simply uh, splitting this string based on uh, those spaces. So we can then simply say question dot split. And this then returns a list that contains all the individual parts of the question. So let's store them in appropriate variable names. So for the first one, we're going to say feature name. The second one is the comparison operator. Oops, comparison operator. And then the third one is simply the value. And those uh, variables we can now use to ask our particular question. So let's write a comment, ask question, and then we're gonna say if example brackets feature name is smaller or equal to our value. And since this value is still a string, we have to convert it to a float so that we can actually then ask this question. And if our answer to that question is yes, then we're going to pick the first element of this list as our answer. And we're going to say answer equals three brackets and um, question. That way uh, we, can ex uh, we can get this list and then we simply want to have the first element of that list. And if the answer to the question is no, then we want to have the second element. So let's copy this line and then we're going to change the zero to a one. So that's how we uh, ask this particular question. And then we can create now our base case. And as I said earlier, the base case is if our answer um, is not a dictionary. So we're going to say if not is instance answer dict and if that's the case then we simply want to return our answer and this is then our classification and if our answer is a dictionary then we're going to enter the recursive part of the function and then obviously we want to make the recursive call of the function so we simply say return classify example and here we pass in our example again, and now our answer. Because um, this answer is this remaining tree. So to make it a little bit more clear that this answer is a tree, we can also say then residual, residual tree equals answer. And then we pass in this residual tree variable to the function. So that's now our classify example function. So let's copy that and paste it into the definition of the function. And now let's check if it actually works. So we're going to say classify example and we pass in our example and our tree. So this example and that tree. So if I run this function now, it should return a string that says iris versus the color. So let's run it. And it does. And now let's look at a different example. So we're going to simply pick um, the second row. And this is an Iris Virginica. So now it should return Iris Virginica. And it does. And let's have a look at the third example. And this one is an Iris Tosa. And the function returns Iris Tosa. So the function seems to be working. And now we can use this function to classify all of our examples. And we're going to do that. Uh, in conjunction with calculating the accuracy. So let's create another heading. And here we're going to say accuracy. And let's simply call the function calculate accuracy. And here we pass in a data frame, which is going to be our testing data frame. And then obviously also our tree. And then the function should, of course, return the accuracy. And the way that this function should work is that we're going to create create two new columns for this data frame. The first one is going to contain our classification of the respective examples. 
and the second one is going to state whether this classification is correct or not. And then we can use the second column to, uh, to calculate the actual accuracy. And uh, doing the function that way, we can then also later on see which flowers were or which examples were misclassified and also why. So let's create the first column. So we're going to say df brackets classification. So this is the one that going to, is going to uh, contain our classification of the examples. And here we're going to say df.apply. And here we want to simply apply our classify example function. And now to make sure that we apply it to all the rows, we're going to set the access argument to 1. And then obviously we also have to uh, input the second parameter for this function. And therefore we're going to use the args argument of this apply function or method. And here we have to pass in a tuple, so we're going to say parentheses, tree, and then we have to pass in a trailing comma. That's because if we just write, for example, parentheses 5, then this will be interpreted simply as an integer. But if you pass in um, a trailing comma, then this will then be interp inter interpreted as uh, a tuple with one element. So that's why we have to pass in this comma. And this now creates our classification column. And now in the second column, we're going to check whether that classification is correct or not. So we're going to call it classification, classification correct. And here we're going to simply compare our classification column with the label column. So we're going to say df classification, whoops, classification equals df dot label. And this will create a column that consists of uh, booleans. And since true values are interpreted as a one and false values as a zero, we can then simply calculate um, the mean of that column to get our accuracy. So we're going to say accuracy equals df dot um, classification correct dot mean. And that's already our function. So now let's see if it works. So we're going to say calculate accuracy of our test data frame and we pass in also our tree. And it works. And here we get an accuracy of 95%. So not all of our examples were classified correctly. So let's have a look at which were misclassified. So let's print out our da test data frame. And here are the two new columns. And here we can see which ones were classified correctly and which ones were misclassified. So here, uh, the row with index 77 was uh, or didn't or wasn't classified correctly. So let's print out only that line. So we're going to say dot log bracket 77. And now let's see why this was uh, misclassif uh, misclassified. So let's print again our tree. And here we ask first if the pattern width is smaller or equal to 0 0.8. This is not the case because it's 1.7. So we're going to pick the second element of the list as our answer. And here we have to ask another question. And this time we check if the pattern width is uh, smaller or equal to 1.65. And it's 1.7. So we again pick the second element. And that's why we classify it as an Iris Virginica, even though it was an Iris Rosy color. But uh, this mis misclassification was relatively uh, close because um, the pattern width is just 0 0.05 bigger than it had, had to be. So if you look at those test uh, flowers, this one here is uh, this particular flower which was misclassified, misclassified as you can see. Uh, it is just slightly outside of our uh, ice was color decision boundaries. So this misclass misclassification was a close call. But overall, this uh, function seems to be working. And now I would like to test just one more thing. Namely, as you may remember, when we did our, or when we ran our train test split function, we set this random seed. So 
that we, that we would always get the same flowers into the training data frame and the testing data frame. And what I would like to test now is to see if I don't set this random seed, if I then get a different uh, decision tree and also a different accuracy value. So then let's just copy those three lines of our API and then scroll back down. And here let's print them. And here we're going to set the max def to uh, free. So we can then compare this tree to this one. And then let's also uh, print this tree and let's also print the accuracy. So let's now run this. And as you can see, the accuracy is different. It's just a 0 0.9, but uh, the tree is almost the same because only those questions were kind of switched. And here, instead of asking if the pedal length is smaller equal to 4. 95 it asks if it is smaller than 4.85 so if i now rerun this cell we get the same tree and this one is also slightly only slightly different the only difference is uh, here it's uh, 1.75 instead of 1.65 so as you can see we uh, the trees that we get are relatively similar and that's because um, as we've seen in this diagram before, the different species of the iris flowers are relatively clearly distinguished from each other along the petal width and the petal length. So we shouldn't expect to get uh, trees that don't uh, that look very different depending on which uh, of those dots go into our training data and which go into our testing data. So now, basically, all of our functions or all of our function work, which basically means that we are done with coding our decision tree classifier from scratch. But I would like to change one more thing, and that's because um, our ice flower data set only contains uh, continuous variables. And I would like what I would like um, the algorithm to be able to do is that it should also be able to handle categorical data. And how to do that? will be the topic of the upcoming video. So thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.